friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about some of my favorite books that I picked up because of BookTube. This video was inspired by Mackenzie Lane, and I know she reads a lot more YA than what I read, so my list is going to look very, very different from hers. But I love the idea of talking about some of the books that I picked up because of booktube, especially books that maybe I never would have tried if I hadn't seen them on this platform. Let's get into it. First up is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, and really we could just say the entire trilogy, the whole Broken Earth trilogy. This is one of my all-time favorite books. I love it so much, and it's completely genius. I, I've had a lot of you asking for it, so heads up. Yes, I do want to reread these, and I do have read-along plans in the works for later in the year, so stay tuned. But The Fifth Season is a really interesting blend of science fiction and fantasy. It has strong characters, amazing world building, and so much depth in the themes. It's a little hard to give you details of the plot without spoiling anything, but one thing that's interesting about this world is there's a magic system called orogeny in it, which is basically the ability to create earthquakes or like impact things to do with the, the earth and the atmosphere. And oh, how to talk about this. It's just so good. Just read it. Just read it. Like you won't regret it. It's so freaking good and so smart. It explores themes like motherhood and complicated family relationships, oppression and systemic injustice, just so many things but in this really really richly developed world with amazing characters uh, I love this entire series so so much and I think N.K. Jemisin's mind must just be an amazing place to exist in so I do really want to reread these and I love them and I didn't know anything about them before booktube so booktube is definitely what made me pick this series up. Another book that I definitely picked up because I saw it everywhere on booktube is Circe by Madeline Miller and this has also become one of my all-time favorite books. This is super super character driven. I'm definitely a more character driven reader. I love reading about the internal lives of interesting characters and this book is a retelling of the story of Circe who's a witch from Greek mythology. It's definitely slow paced and if you don't like the character driven stuff, if you don't like just following her in her life, you're probably gonna think it's boring. Like there are definitely people who think it's boring but I loved it. It resonated with me so much as a woman, as a mother, the experiences that she has yeah, it was, this, this book was so good. I loved it. Another one that was everybody's favorite the year it came out and I grudgingly the following year picked it up and I'm very glad that I did is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book is so so good and it, it's unusual I think to find a book like this that appeals to so many different kinds of people with so many different genres that they usually read. This is technically historical fiction which is not my preferred genre. I'm very picky about the historical fiction that I enjoy but I loved this. Evelyn Hugo feels like a real person and this is told as an interview that she's giving at the end of her life. She had been a Cuban film star who had been famously married to seven husbands but spoiler not really though I feel like everybody kind of knows the twist is that the real love of her life was a woman and so it's a really interesting representation of bisexuality of film during the golden age of Hollywood and I came out of this feeling like I should be able to go google Evelyn Hugo's movies and watch them because she felt like such a lived-in person. I loved this and I totally get the hype definitely would not have picked it up if I hadn't seen so many different kinds of people and different kinds of readers talk about it and love it, but I'm really glad I did. Another book that I definitely picked up because I saw so much hype for it on booktube and I'm kicking myself for not having done it earlier because this was so my jam is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I loved this book so much. It's sci-fi but it's soft sci-fi. It's very character driven and it's like a hangout book. It's kind of like let's hang out with this quirky nice diverse cast of characters on their adventures through space. There is a plot but it's definitely not remotely driven by the plot and it's more minimal. Like this is just 
a, just a happy feel-good sci-fi book and I really really loved it. I love Becky Chambers writing and yeah like I again it was one where I was like what is this? Everyone keeps talking about it. Maybe I should give it a try. I finally did and I was very very pleased. Then a book that I guess I sort of picked up because of booktube but to be honest I probably picked this up because of a couple of my subscribers who kept nudging me to read from this author is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. Now of course it has been all over booktube and everybody is talking about it but I partly read it because I'd had people being like, read TJ Klune, read TJ Klune. And so when this was coming out traditionally, I was like, that's a really cute cover. Let's do it. I love this. It's like a warm hug of a book. It's this like soft fantasy story following a slow burn romance between two middle-aged men, who, one of whom is like a low-level bureaucrat who's supposed to oversee these homes for orphaned magical children, and when he goes to do an inspection of this one home, he ends up falling for the man who runs the home. And it's just the super soft sweet romance, but also the children. The children are the sweetest! Chauncey, who looks monstrous, but he just wants to help people and be a bellhop. Look, I just love the children so much. This was so cute and this was the book that we all needed in 2020. Another book that I picked up because of booktube hype and do not regret is Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire. I'm gonna be honest this cover did not draw me in and I kept seeing people talk about it and I was like eh, but what, what eh, really? <laughs> People were like, no, it's so great. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I think I finally heard somebody talk about the fact that it's about portal fantasy and has nods to Narnia, but with more diverse cast of characters. And I was like, okay, I really like Narnia. I like portal fantasies. Let me give this a try. So it's the first in a series of novellas about the school for wayward children. It's about children who had slipped through a portal into another world and come back to our world and are having trouble coping and they can be at the school. The first book is also kind of a murder mystery. There's like a murder mystery plot running it, but it's setting things up for the rest of the series. I freaking love this. I love the entire series. It is one of my all-time favorite series. Sean and McGuire has become a favorite author for me. I buy all of these books and read all of these books and I love them so much and I probably never ever would have touched it if it weren't for booktube because the cover wasn't like calling to me, but so worth it. Then we have The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. I feel like this was really big on booktube a year or two before I started my channel, but people were still talking a little bit about it. And I had seen this and was like, what is this cover? Like, what is this girl in the water? I, this looks like very melodramatic. It's so good. I really, really loved it. It's a thriller with paranormal elements and it, it is very high drama very high angst and it has like <laughs> one of the best angsty love interests that I've read in a YA book in a while. I was so into this. Didn't necessarily expect to be. I can't remember what I picked it up for. It was some kind of a project where I was like well let me give this a try and then I loved it and bought more books and need to at some point continue on with the series. But um, yeah this was this was great. Did I read the second one? I think I read the second one too. Yeah I read the second one too and it was also very good. So didn't find the cover interesting, picked it up because of booktube, ended up loving it. Another book that I definitely read because of all the hype I was seeing on booktube and I do not regret it is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgan Stern. A lot of people were very excited about this because I know The Night Circus was a really big deal. I liked but didn't love The Night Circus so I was like uh, I don't know but everyone was talking about this book before it came out and I was like okay you know what maybe I'll like it. The premise sounds interesting I'm gonna give it a try and then I loved it. It was my favorite book of the year, the year that it came out, and yeah I this, this book was so my jam. It's another very slow paced book and it's a book that's really about storytelling and ideas. I liked the main character but I wouldn't call this character driven. I think it's ideas driven. 
you know what this book feels to me like? It kind of feels like a novelized version of playing an open world RPG like Dragon Age because you'll follow characters having to figure things out and put things in certain places and almost solve puzzles to open doors to new areas and to me it was really reminiscent of the feeling of playing a video game like that which I really enjoyed and I just love the love for storytelling and the writing was so beautiful and so lyrical. I know this is not everybody's cup of tea but I picked it up because of booktube hype and did not regret it. Next is something that was in my top five books of 2020 and I wasn't initially going to read it but I kept hearing people on booktube rave about it so I did and uh, again what took me so long? Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This is so good and I don't really know what I expected given the cover. I'm not sure I'm, I'm not sure the cover like really gives the vibe of what this book is but I would say this is kind of like Arthurian Legends meets Shadowhunters except better and with a lot richer thematic content in terms of talking about grief and race and uh, like mental health and so many things. I really really loved this a lot. I think anybody who enjoys books like what Cassandra Clare writes in the Shadowhunters universe will probably really enjoy this. It has similar vibes to it but with richer thematic content. It's set in our world but with secret magic and there's a secret society that is inspired by Arthurian legends and our main character is a total badass discovering the existence of magic, discovering things about her family history, and this was like everything. I loved it so much. Really really glad booktube finally pushed me to pick it up. Booktube also made me pick up The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang and this was so good. I don't know that I necessarily would have gravitated towards it if I hadn't heard so many people raving about it, but I'm really glad I picked it up. I think I initially listened to it on audio and decided I needed to own my own copy and continue with the series. This is pretty dark military fantasy. It's inspired by real world events in Chinese history and a lot of it is about the morality of warfare or rather immorality and some of the horrific things that can take place when genocide is the goal. The second book deals a lot with colonization in really interesting ways and I just have loved this series a whole lot. Rin is our main character and I feel like people I feel like there are people who really don't like Rin and I don't know that she's necessarily supposed to be likable in that way. She's not necessarily a good or moral person but I really appreciate her as a main character. I think she's interesting. I think she's really fleshed out and I, I think following her through this world in a sort of grim dark military fantasy is really fascinating. So I have loved the series. I definitely recommend it although I will say for sure if you need content warnings check them because there are some pretty disturbing descriptions of wartime violence against civilians including like women and children that take place in this book but I think it's really earned and really well executed. Very glad I picked this up. And the final thing I want to talk about that I picked up because of booktube is in some ways an entire genre but I'm just going to talk about one book and series in particular. That is romance. Before I joined booktube I was not really a romance reader and probably had some really stereotyped ideas about romance as a genre and it wasn't until I really joined the platform that I started becoming friendly with and watching all of these really diverse interesting amazing women who read romance including people like my friend Mara at Books Like Whoa were now really good friends but when I first started watching her channel I was so struck by oh there's this like really interesting smart woman who also reads like nonfiction and classics who reads romance and talks about it in these interesting ways. Maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe I should give it a chance. And so that kind of began my journey <laughs> into the romance genre and it's now one of my favorite genres which has been really cool and I feel like that has been such a gift that booktube has given me. But one series in particular that I definitely picked up because of booktube because I saw so many of my booktube friends raving about it and I now love this series and I'm continuing to try to catch up on it but that is the Psy Changeling series by Nalini Singh. Specifically this is my favorite book in the series Caressed by Ice. 
I love it. This is talked about as paranormal romance, although it really has more of a sci-fi bent to it where the reasons for everything have a scientific explanation. This is set in a parallel earth far in the future where humanity has evolved in three kind of disparate ways. You have the Psy who have these powerful psychic abilities and train their children out of feeling any emotion. They're not supposed to feel any emotion. You have the changelings who are basically shifters. They're able to transform from human into their animal form. They are all about emotion and feeling. And then you have the sort of regular humans in between. And so of course the first book in the series is a romance between a Psy and a changeling where the Psy is starting to feel these emotions that she's not supposed to feel. She tries to hide them and of course the changeling is all about the emotion and it's this kind of sexy romance between the two of them but also there's so much incredible world building that takes place in this series. There's a lot of overarching political intrigue and machinations that are going on. Um, individual book arcs will sometimes have murder mystery plots like in the first book there's a serial killer that they're trying to track down and then at the center of each book there's a different couple that is finding love together. And one thing that is maybe my favorite thing about the series is as you read on, you get to revisit all of your favorite characters and kind of see them a little bit in snippets further on in their relationship as they're getting married or having children or, you know, dealing with some issue with this later on relationship dynamic. And I just love that a lot. So I am very, very grateful that BookTube pushed me to pick up the Side Changeling series because I would say this is for sure one of my favorite romance series now. I kind of feel like I'm barely scratching the surface because there are so many books that I've picked up because of BookTube, but this is a list of some of my personal favorites, uh, ones that I don't know that I would have picked up if it hadn't been for the booktube community and I am so grateful because they are wonderful. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video and for your question of the day. This shouldn't come as a big surprise but tell me about one of the best books you read because of booktube. What is a favorite book that you don't know if you would have picked up if it hadn't been recommended to you through this community? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon link down below or check out channel memberships if you want sneak peeks at all of my upcoming video projects. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.